And here it is slow. Oh, so that was slow? Here it is slow. You keep using the horn. I don't think it means what you think it means. Yep, that was pretty much my reaction along with the reaction of, I'm sure, millions of other guitar players around the world when we saw Ingve play for the first time. Now, back then, being a clueless teenager, I thought I was sure that Ingve was doing this just to troll people or to show off how good he was compared to the rest of us mere mortals who'd never catch up and play as well as him. But as I got better and I learned more about both playing and practicing and I got into teaching and got to work with thousands of people over the years, what I found to be a much, much deeper root cause behind Ingve not slowing down his examples very much in his videos has to do with the fundamental misunderstanding most guitar players have around this whole idea of slow practice. And that misunderstanding could well be the reason why you are doing all the slow practice in the world but are not getting much benefit from it in terms of increasing your own speed. It all starts to go wrong the first time you hear this well-intentioned but general advice to do more slow practice, to work on slow and perfect playing before you speed things up, to work on accuracy and that sort of a thing. The problem is most people give you this advice without qualifying it in any way. They say it as if the word slow means the same thing to everybody, which of course it doesn't, or if it means the same thing to them as it does to you. Now most of the time people give this advice with good intentions because it's pretty much impossible to screw something up when you slow it down. The problem is that just slowing down doesn't automatically do anything to help you improve the thing you're trying to play better. For one thing, slow practice means different things to different people. How slow are we talking about? Are we talking 10% slower, 50% slower, 70% slower? How slow is slow enough? Can you practice too slowly so it becomes counterproductive? The answer to that question is yes, by the way. So unless somebody gives you at least some kind of a ballpark for how much you need to slow down and what to focus on when you slow down, then the general advice to practice slowly is about as useful as a toy fire hose during a real fire. Slow practice in and of itself does nothing to improve your playing unless you also have complete clarity on what problem you're trying to solve and what is the solution to that problem. Say for example your problem is in your picking hand. Let's say when you're playing scales you're moving your pick too much and these excessive motions are eating into your speed. So the solution, now that you understand the problem, is to just make the motion smaller because a smaller motion is a faster motion. So with these two things, the problem and the solution to the problem, you now can figure out exactly how much you need to slow down. Now it's obviously going to be impossible for me or for anybody to tell you the exact amount of BPM to slow down your playing, but once you understand the problem and the solution, you can go by feel to find the exact tempo to slow down to. And you will know you're practicing too fast or you haven't slowed down enough yet because you aren't able to control the picking hand motions, they're still too big, so you know you need to keep slowing down. But if you slow down too much to the tempo where the problem doesn't come up at all and your brain doesn't have to concentrate in any way, shape, or form to make the motion smaller, then you've missed the point and your slow practice in this case is a complete waste of time because you're not able to concentrate at all on reprogramming your picking hand motions and your muscle memory. You need to find the exact tempo where the problem just begins to appear, but you can still control it because the tempo is slow enough. It's a narrow threshold you've got to reach, and once you reach that threshold, that's exactly the tempo you need to slow down to. Now obviously this tempo threshold is going to vary from person to person, from lick to lick, and from problem to problem. If you've got fretting hand issues, you're going to have one tempo you need to slow down to. If you've got picking hand issues, it's a different tempo. If you've got timing issues, a different tempo altogether. Now to clarify, everything I just described applies to licks you already know pretty well. You have them under your fingers and you're just trying to speed them up and make them easier to play at higher tempos. But when you're learning something for the first time, then you simply need to slow down enough to make it easy for your brain to keep up with the notes you're learning. So there are multiple layers to this whole idea of slow practice, which is one more reason why you should never be satisfied with just taking somebody's general advice to practice slowly unless you understand the big picture context and also the small details. Of it. So, going back to Ingve's video, the primary reason that most people miss completely about why he didn't slow down as much with his examples as most people should, or as much as most people thought that Ingve needed to slow down, is simply because he didn't have to. His technique is so dialed in already that the gap between the threshold of control that I described 
then his absolute top end speed is so small it's almost non-existent. So I would bet as far as Ingve was concerned he was already slowing down more than he even needed to because he was already slowing down below his own threshold of control. But for most people their threshold of control is much much lower than Ingve's, so that is why they need to slow down much much slower than their top speed. Now this is neither an attack nor a defense of Ingve. it's simply an observation of what is happening in his video and this is something you should pick up on as you're learning what it means to practice slowly and what it means to practice slowly for you and the specific problems and challenges you have. And more importantly when it comes to building guitar speed you can build a lot of guitar speed without doing any slow practice whatsoever. If you want to learn how click the link in the description of this video go to the page on the screen right now I'm going to show you a free one hour masterclass called guitar speed formula. What it is is a way to practice where you don't have to do the song and dance of starting very slow and increasing your speed in small increments because that's a pretty boring way to practice and more importantly it doesn't work nearly as well as most people think it does. If you want to know a different way that works actually a whole lot better it doesn't require a lot of practice time check out that link enter your email address I'll send you the video for free. And speaking of Ingve, I've got another video right here that breaks down a few of his guitar technique nuances that help him not only to play guitar really fast but also to stay very very relaxed in his body as he is doing it. This is something anybody can learn to do it doesn't take a lot of practice time at all. If you want to know how watch this video next.